Good evening, guys. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, Paul. Hi, Tita Susan. Happy New Year. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a scorpion and a turtle. And scorpions, alam niya naman, don't swim. Di ba? But turtles do. So isang maga, this scorpion got up and decided that he wanted to cross the river. Kaya he went and he found a turtle. At sabi na sa kanya, uh, Excuse me, pwede mo ba ako sakay sa likod mo to get to the other side? Sabi nung pagong, Ha? Sino niloko mo? Kilala kita. As soon as we go to the water, you will sting me and we will drown. Sagot ng scorpion, eh, anong logic nun? If I stung you, you will drown. I will also drown with you. Hindi nga ako marunong lumangoy, di ba? So, so walang, walang sense on my part to do that. So, napaisip yung pag Sabi na, hmm, may point ka. Tama naman. Okay, sige. Sakay ka na. And so, they went in the water. And sure enough, after a few minutes, the scorpion started to aim his, his stinger right at the neck of the turtle. And bam, he stung him. And as the turtle started to sink and die, he turned his head back up to the scorpion. Sabi niya, ano to? Kala ko ba walang sense? And the scorpion simply answered, pasensya na. But it has nothing to do with logic. It's my nature. Needless to say, they did not live happily ever after. Now, anong connection nito sa atin? Well, you see, all of us have a sinful nature. And that nature has a sting to it. Because we have been stung by sin and that poison is already inside us. It's inside our system. At lahat tayo, every one of us has that. The sting of sin. The sting of death that's eventually going to kill all of us permanently. Just as Paul said, sabi niya, death has spread to all men because all have sinned. Now, si Jacob, as we have seen in the past few chapters, is a perfect example of a scorpion. Kasi whenever he got close to someone, he would sting them. Di ba? He stung his brother Esau by taking his blessing. He stung his dad by deceiving him. Tapos, last time, nakita din natin that because he was so passive as a father, he basically stung his daughter, Dinah. But, at medyo naging paboritong word natin to dito sa FBF, di ba? But, we serve a God of second chances. We serve a God of unbelievable mercy and grace. At yan ang makikita natin ngayon, no? Jacob's second chance. Jacob, the scorpion. Because everything, after everything that we have seen, that after everything that happened nung last chapter, now the Lord is bringing him back to the house of God. Bethel. Finally. Bringing him back to that place where he first got to know the Lord. Where he first got safe, basically. And, and he has this chance to have that do-over. No. Kasi nga, pagkatapos ng lahat na nangyari sa Shechem, nagkagulo-gulo buhay niya, di ba? Because he did not listen. At kung naalala niyo, sabi din natin sa last chapter that it was a godless chapter. Kasi nga, God was not mentioned, not even once sa buong chapter na yun. And it was a very difficult passage to read through kasi it was filled with deceit and lust and rape and murder and shame. Which is exactly what happens when you push God away. Now, if Genesis chapter 34 was a godless chapter, I'm sure matatawa, mat, matutuwa kayong makita na itong chapter 35 naman is a God-filled chapter. No? Kasi dito, we will see God mentioned and referred to by names like El Bethel, meaning the house of God. A number, um, a total of 22 times. 
So from not being mentioned at all to being mentioned 22 times in a chapter. It's a complete turnaround, di ba? So it's a it's a revival para kay Jacob, no? And and that's what a revival literally means, di ba? To pass from death to life. And that's what Jacob is experiencing dito. Pero it took a crisis sa buhay niya for this to happen. Kasi nga, he was still lingering in, in places like Shechem instead of just obeying. And now the Lord is bringing him back to the house of God. At dito tayo mag no? as we open this chapter. So open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. So God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Now, kung naalala niyo way back in chapter 38, when Jacob was running away from Esau, uminto siya sa isang lugar in the middle of nowhere. Di ba? And it looks God forsaken. Down na down siya noon. At, at, pero nung, nung, nung gabing yun, at his lowest moment, he dreamt of angels going down up and down in a, 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 a staircase. At di lang yun, God spoke to him. At nilatag na yung buong plano niya para sa kanya. I will give you all this land. Your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth and I will be with you wherever you go. At nung paggising niya, sabi, sabi ni Jacob, wow, God is in fact in this place and I did not know it. And as a response, he worshiped the Lord right then and there. Tapos he made a vow. Sabi niya, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go so that I come to this place, to my father's house, in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. So this was Jacob making pinky swear, no? To worship the Lord dito. Pero ito ang problema. Hindi na siya bumalik. Kasi on his way here, nagdetour pa siya to all these places, which I think all of us can relate to, di ba? Many times we, we linger in places we shouldn't be, doing things we should not do. For Jacob, he went to Shechem and it ended in disaster para sa pamilya niya. Pero the Lord came back to him and said, Arise. I love that. Kasi nasan ba si Jacob ngayon? His family is falling apart. His reputation is, is ruined because he messed up. Pero in light of all of that, God in His mercy says, Arise. Hindi, umupo ka muna. You're best for what you did. Or, back off, Jacob. Ang tigas kasi ng ulo mo. Kaya, hanap na lang ako ng ibang papalit sa'yo. He can certainly do that. He's God. Pero He did not. Kasi our God is a God of unbelievable grace. And that's what he said to Jacob dito. And, 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 and it's the same thing that he's saying to us tonight. No? It's the exact same thing. Wherever you are right now, whatever sin that is dragging you down, God is saying, arise and come back to the house of God. Come back to the house of worship. It doesn't matter what you did. Don't dwell on it. Just come back. I think we natin kung paano nag-respond si Jacob. Verse 2 and 4. 2 to 4. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel so that I may make an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. Okay. So kanina, we saw Jacob in the midst of a spiritual revival. Di ba? He saw the error of his ways and is now turning his eyes back to the Lord. 
Pero itong pamilya niya is another story. Sabi dito, they were dabbling in idol worship. Kaya he has to order them. Hey, tigilan niyo na yan. Put away all your idols because we are going back to Bethel. And reading this, ang unang pumasok sa isip ko is, alam niyo, a lot of wickedness has been tolerated in this family for years. Kasi the fact na, na ngayon lang niya naisipin gawin to, means his family has been involved in idol worship for a very long time. Kung naalala niyo, a few chapters back ni Nako ni Rachel, yung mga idols ng tatay niya. And those statues remain in their home mula noon. And Jacob knows this. Pero he was like, whatever. Never really give it much thought. Kasi, again, he was the passive father, di ba? Parents, listen to this. It is your calling and your responsibility to train and reprimand your children. Paul said, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So it is not only your right, but your responsibility to say, this is the right thing to do, this is the wrong thing to do. This is acceptable, this is not acceptable. This can be practiced, this cannot be practiced because it goes against what God says. Guys, sa ayaw sa gusto nyo, it's your responsibility. Kasi many parents, especially in today's political, politically correct world, will, will say, it's not for me to impose my faith. Kaya bahala sila to figure it out on their own. Alam mo kung ganun ka? Let me tell you something. Pasensya na, pero your faith is useless. Kasi regardless kung ilan taon na sila, your children, your family is your responsibility. Entrusted to you by God Himself. And what you do, what you teach them or not teach them, you will be accountable to the Lord. Kasi that's your most important task as a parent. And Jacob realized that. That he just tolerated it. Pero now, he is so convicted that he puts his foot down. At sabi na, guys, it's time to end this nonsense. Give me those statues and those trinkets and those good luck charms. All these things that are contrary to what we know is, is real and true. At kinawa niya. And he buried them under the terebinth tree. Now, when we refer to trees sa scripture, alam niyo what it speaks of? The cross of Calvary. So he took the idols and like every other sin that needs to be dealt with, he buries them and cleanses them and, and, and erases them at the foot of the cross. At pansin niyo to, God never told him to do any of this. He did not say, Huy, ano ba yan? Pwede ba itapon niyo na yan? So, I'll, so I can give you that second chance? No, he never said that. God just said, Arise and go to Bethel. And Jacob was so, so touched by this graciousness of God Nakusa na niyang sinabi na, hey, let's get rid of all these things that we are putting our trust in instead of the one true and invisible and yet almighty God. Hindi para i tayo because He has already blessed us. And that's the key, no? That's what grace does. Grace will make you realize how kind and how good and how merciful God is to me day after day after day. It causes me to, to want to put away all that stuff. My, my, my trinkets and my th things that are really not of God. Because God, you are so good. And you are more than enough. So it's a response on Joseph's, Jacob's part to God's goodness. No, That's why he, he cleans up his house. At sabi niya sa pamilya na, hey, the Lord has invited me. Actually, He has invited all of us to go back to Bethel. 
to the house of worship. Maski na balasubas tayo, maski na sinungaling tayo, maski na mamamatay ta- tao tayo. No matter what you have done in the past, God is ready to forgive if we would only come. Kung ayaw mo, it's your choice, pero He is inviting you. God is so good. Kaya let's go, sabi ni Jacob. Huwag na tayong maghintay. Let's leave all those things behind and let's go because He is waiting for us. And as they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them. So they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. Now, ano to? Kasi natandaan nyo, minasaker ni Levi and Simeon yung mga Shechemites. Di ba? Siyempre, kung may ganyang klaseng, may ganyang pangyayari, mag-viral yan. Di ba? Even during ancient times, news of this will, will, will go around so fast to the nearby tribes. And, and these Canaanite tribes will look at this as an act of hostility to their fellow countrymen. So if si, si Jacob and his family, if they would be traveling ev- anywhere, no? medyo delikado buhay nila. Di ba? Pero God, as always, is working behind the scenes. Kasi kahit hindi natin nakikita, He is always moving people into places, moving even their attitude so that His people will be protected. I want to share with you a real story, no? This is a true story na narinig ko before about a church sa Mindanao na hinaharas ng NPA. So, one Sunday in the middle of worship service, two jeeps of this NPA came. At siyempre may dala silang mga baril, no? Sabi nila, same time next week, Babalik kami rito. I-ready na lahat ng pera na na-collect na doon sa offering at dadaanan namin. Wala kayong choice kasi kung tumanggi kayo, papatayin namin kayo lahat. So everyone was afraid. Kasi notorious tong mga NPA na to kasi they have already killed a bunch of people before this. Kaya alam ng mga tao hindi to bluff, no? Guys, hulaan niyo ilan ang nag-attend ng church nung susunod na linggo. Walaan nyo. This church was jam-packed. Tayo, konting ulan lang, ay, next week na lang ako pupunta. Maintindihan naman ni God. The lives of these people in this church were being threatened. And it made them want to go worship more. They spent the entire time praying. They were on their knees crying out to God for deliverance. Minutes went by, hours went by, walang dumating. Ano nangyari? No one knows. Tapos nabalitaan na lang nila nung hapon na yun, the two jeeps full of NPA were indeed on their way papunta sa barangay nila. Pero a freak accident happened and all the soldiers on those chips were killed. Now, kung ikaw yung isa sa mga tao dito sa church na to, pray. How would you feel? The terror of the Lord has fallen upon their enemies. God was protecting them. Much like what is happening here. At itong pamilyang to, with all their idols already buried at the foot of the tree, the next step really is just to surrender everything and trust in the Lord. Di ba? And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is the land of Canaan, and he and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel. Because there, God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. Now, when he came into this place years ago, dyan na una talagang nakilala si God, di ba? 
at ipinangalan niya tong lugar na to as Bethel or the house of God. Pero ngayon pagbalik niya, nagbago isip niya. Pinalitan niya to to El Bethel. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? It means the God of the house of God. And that shows so much growth on the part of Jacob. Alam niyo bakit? Because he's not impressed with the place anymore. Kasi now he's impressed with God. And you might say that's obvious. No, it's not. Kasi a lot of people today are so hung up on church, on Bible study, on some event that you have to attend that they forget that it's really about the God of the house of God. Some of us have that place where you always go to, di ba? Kasi sabi mo, that's where God speaks to me. Now, linaw ko lang. There is nothing wrong with that, no? Pero if your God is really so big, couldn't He speak to you in another place? So it's not the place. It's the Lord of the place. It's not FPF. It's the God of FPF. It's not the preacher kasi some preachers are so celebrated na parang sila na yung naging star. No. That's actually idolatry. So it's not about the preacher. It's the Lord of the preacher. And listen to this. It's not even about the Bible. It's the God of the Bible. Kasi some people are studying this, this book solely to gain some sort of intellectual or, or theological understanding. Again, nothing wrong with that. But it's so much more than that. No? It's about the God of the Word of God. It's about me being able to talk directly to the one being talked about dito sa scripture. And I get to share my heart to him. I get, he, he is the one who, who reveals to me his heart in these pages. So, it's not about the book. Pero this, this, this book, this is the door through which I enter to talk to the Lord. Gets? So it's not about God, it's about our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jacob came to understand that now. Kaya he named the place El Bethel, the God of the house of God. Moving on. And Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. And she was buried under an oak tree below Bethel. And so he called its name Alon Bakot, which means the oak of weeping. Now, sino si Deborah? Well, siya yung link ni Jacob sa childhood niya. Kasi siya yung handmaiden ni Rebecca. At alam naman natin kung gano'ng ka-close si Jacob sa nanay niya, di ba? So si Deborah was that surviving link that he has of his mom. And most probably, siya din yung nag-alaga sa kanya growing up, no? Kaya nga sila close. Um, so parang yayan na to. At Siguro, nag-reconnect sila nung bumalik siya dito. And, 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 but not for long. Kasi sabi dito, she died. And it was a painful time for, for Jacob. No? Kaya he named that place the Oak of Weeping. And God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you and kings shall come from your body. Okay. Narinig na natin lahat to. Di ba? When he was wrestling with God, sabi sa kanya, your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel. Pero ngayon, inuulit na naman. Bakit? Well, it's actually very interesting para sa akin. No? Kasi there was no 
Pag tinignan nyo, there was no new information given dito. Inuulit lang talaga. It's just a reminder. Your name was Jacob. Now I'm changing it to Israel. Alam nyo, sometimes when we read the Bible or attend Bible studies like this, ang, ang, ang approach natin is, ano kayong bagong matutunan ko ngayon? Ganun tayo, di ba? What new information will I receive today? Pero alam nyo, many times, ang kailangan talaga natin, more than anything else, is just a reminder of what God already said. Kasi hindi ko alam sa inyo, pero ako, I'm, I'm reading the Bible every day, pero I still always forget. Ang dami ko ng notes, pero madalas nakakalimutan ko pa rin yung nabasa ko. Just, even just this morning. So I don't need any new information. I just needed a reminder. An affirmation from the Lord in order to have that fresh application of the old information. Let me give you an illustration. This is William Randolph Hearst. He was a billionaire art collector during the early 1900s. No? Ngayon, isang araw, he saw a picture of an art piece that fascinated him so much. Gustong-gusto niya. At sabi na doon sa mga tauhan niya, find this piece for me. Money is no object. Hanapin niyo kahit saan sulok ng mundo pa kayong mapadpad. I just need to have it. So after a week of searching, this art purveyors came back. At kamot ulo sila. Sabi nila, ah, alam mo ba, matagal nang nasa collection mo yung painting na yan. Kasi kung saan-saan mo kami pinagdala, kung saan-saan mo kami pinapunta, it's just in one of your storage facilities. I mean, how rich do you have to be to not even know what you own, di ba? Pero alam niyo, he's no different from us. The Bible says that if Christ is our Lord, then we are blessed with all the riches, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And here we are going, God, tulang to. I need more. No. Just look at your bank book. Ito. To see what you already have. To see you already have it. You're just not looking for it in the right places. Kaya for Jacob dito, uh, ang importante dito is that he gained a deeper appreciation of what he has already experienced before but may not have fully grasped. At malamang nga, hindi, di ba? Because of what we saw in the last chapter. Kaya kailangan iulitin sa kanya ni God. Hey, you're Israel now. Hindi ka na si Jacob. You are now the one one who is governed by God. Verse 12. The land that I gave Abraham and Isaac I will give to you. The land I will give to your offspring after you. So kaninong lupa to? Kung nanonood kayo ng news, laging pinag-aagawan pinag yung, yung, yung lugar na yan. Di ba? Sa may gasa. Is it Israel's land or is it Palestinian's land? Without getting too political dito, the simplest answer to that question is, it's God's land. Okay? And because it is His land, He gets to decide who occupies it. Di ba? And here we see it promised to Abraham and his descendants. Pero because of years and years of, of sin and disobedience on the part of his people, ito tayo ngayon. With a lot of confusion and a lot of hurt going on right now sa lugar na yun. Whenever we promise of the ownership of land, pinag lagi. But we know that God, that our God is the Father who never fails. And this, this promise, just basing upon who we know who God is, will be fulfilled one day in one way or another. 
No. Okay, let's move on. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of the place where God has spoken with him, Bethel. Now, ano yung drink offering? Kasi makikita natin to many times throughout the Bible. So it's a symbol of being poured out, no? of pouring one's life out to the Lord. Bago namatay si Apostle Paul in his book, in his last book to Timothy, sabi niya, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. In the time of my departure has come, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Meaning, my life is about to be poured out completely, physically. And I am proud to say that it is being poured out for the Lord. So yan yung meaning ng, ng, ng offering ni Jacob. No? He is publicly declaring, everything in my life is yours, Lord. I'm not holding anything back anymore. I surrender all. And yet, and yet, in the midst of all these blessings and revivals dito, tingnan niyo ano nangyari next. Verse 16. Then they journeyed from Bethel. And they, when they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel went into labor and she had hard labor. Now, kaming mga lalaki, we don't get this, di ba? Whenever we hear going into labor, although alam namin na mahirap, hindi namin namin naintindihan kung gano talaga kahirap. Mga mamis dito, agree ba kayo? I saw my wife go to, into labor twice. At nakikita ko siya, ah, ang sakit. Ah, ang hirap. Aminin ko, nung time na yon sa loob ko, iniisip ko, baka pwede lang ialaksan niya. Well, I guess I'm wrong. So sa mga lalaki dito, Bill Cosby once said, if you want to get an idea what childbirth is like, try taking your lower lip and stretching it all over over your head. And you'll have at least some idea what it feels like. Hindi ko alam kung gano'ng ka-accurate yan sa mga nanay dito. Just comment nyo na lang sa chat room. Anyway, so Rachel had a hard labor. And it was so hard that it killed her. Tingnan nyo. And when her labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have another son. When her son was departing, for she was dying, she called his name Ben Oni, which means the son of my sorrow or the son of my pain. But his father called him Benjamin, which means the son of my right hand. So sabi ni Rachel, ang sakit, di ko na kaya. Kaya his name should be the son of my pain. Pero si Jacob, buti na lang in his wisdom, look beyond the, the temporary emotion of the moment. Said no. Let's rename, I'll rename the child. Kasi siguro nasa isip niya that calling this child the, the son of my pain or the son of my sorrow it would just remind him of this painful event whenever he calls his son. Diba? So he renamed the child the son of my right hand. Meaning, ikaw ang kanang kamay ko. Ikaw ang suporta ko at my age. Like this stuff that I'm holding in my hand. So Rachel died. And she was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is ben Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb. And this is the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to this day. By the way, trivia lang. This is the first mention of Bethlehem dito sa Bible. At alam niyo naman kung sino pinanganak dito. Di ba? This is the place where 
angels will sing and shepherds will come and, and the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will be born. Pero at this very moment, in this chapter, this is also where Rachel, Jacob's beloved wife, will die. By the way, naalala niyo ba nung anak ng anak si Leah? Tapos inggit na inggit si Rachel. Ano sabi niya? Sabi niya, give me children or I'll what? Die. Ang demanding, di ba? And now that she has this child, she dies. So what am I pointing out here? It's a very dangerous and foolish thing to demand things from God. To say, hey, God, ito dapat ang mangyari. Ito ang gusto kong makuha. I'm naming it and I'm claiming it. Guys, if that is how you are with God today, I'm sorry, but that's dumb. Kasi who are you to demand things from God? So ano dapat natin gawin? Well, I suggest you do what Jesus did. Father, Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. At anong sabi na next? Naalala niyo? Not my will, but thy will be done. That's the way to pray. Not give me kids or else I'll die. Or in the name of Jesus, I am claiming this. No. Be like Jesus. Father, this is my heart. This is my concern. Pero ultimately, what you want for me is what I will submit to. Because you see things that I don't, you know things that I cannot possibly know. Not my will, but your will be done. That is true prayer. That is real faith. Having faith, knowing and believing that the Father knows best. And it doesn't mean that we cannot have desires, okay? Of course we do. Of course we can. Pero when we present our desires to Him, whatever He does with it, doon tayo. Even if it doesn't align with what we want in our hearts. Kasi nga, He knows better, di ba? And that is true faith. That's faith in the Father. Not faith in your faith. Kasi iba yun. Yung iba, ganun, di ba? I believe. I am putting my faith on my strong faith. Question, saan si God doon? Di ba? You're just pointing to yourself all over again. Guys, newsflash, it's not about you. It's about this God who graciously give you, has given you this heart. Kasi even that, that ability for you to have faith in Him is a grace from God. Alam niyo ba yun? Now, here's another important thing. Kasi ewan ko kung napansin niyo to. This chapter, if you would characterize it with one, just one word, it would be revival. Di ba? We saw Jacob coming back to the heart of worship, to that place where she should have been all this time. Pero as we are reading through this chapter, anong nakita natin? Two deaths in his life. Three actually, kasi later on we will see his father die. Guys, know this. If God is serious about you, and you are serious about him, sometimes he will have to re-engineer your life. I mean, he will do something that would actually shake you. And you are going to ask, Lord, why is this happening? I just had a revival. I just committed my life to you. Pero bakit ganun? And the example of that is Jacob did. He would suffer three deaths 
just right after recommitting his life to the Lord. And let me ask you this, how would you respond as a believer? How would you respond when God removes or introduces something unpleasant into your, into your life? How would you respond? Or I think ang mas straight to the point na tanong dito is who is more important to you? Kasi when Deborah and Rachel and Isaac died, it was God telling Jacob, you begin anew from here. And that is something very, very instructive para sa atin dito. No? It's that obedience never guarantees us a problem-free life. And you may ask, eh kung ganun, ba't kailangan ko pa mag-commit sa'yo? God. I thought, Following you would make my life better, but it's actually getting worse. Let me tell you something. God is more interested in developing your character than he is in giving you comfort. Because that comfort that you are looking for, it comes much, much later when you are dwelling and resting in his presence for eternity. But what he wants for you to do here, sa mundong to, to just trust in Him. Even in your tragedies. Kasi that is words, that is what's strengthening you. Naisip nyo ba yun? Masakit, yes. Pero sometimes, it is essential for God to shake you out of that spiritual mediocrity. And if you are a genuine child of God, He loves you too much. To let that happen to you. To fall away. Spiritually. And he will break you. Discipline you. If that, was, that is what it takes. To bring you back to him. At dito. At this point sa buhay ni Jacob. God would be taking away from his life. The people that would perhaps have made him. Cling on to the past. Should we be afraid na baka mangyari din sa atin to? Guys, we've been through the story of Job. So alam niyo yung sagot. We have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Job as our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of need. Guys, rest in the reliability of God. Remind yourselves of his promises and believe it or not, this is the only place where true peace can be found. Amen? Let's see what happens next. Kasi hindi pa tapos ang problema ni Jacob. And Israel, pansin niyo, Israel na ang tawag sa kanya dito. Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder where Israel lived in that land and Reuben, nako, Reuben, his eldest son, went and lay with Bilha, his father's concubine. And Israel heard of it. Now, sino ulit si Bilha? Si Bilha, kung naalala niyo, was the handmaiden of Rachel. Binigay niya kay Jacob kasi nga nagpaparamihan sila ng anak ni Leia, di ba? And here, Reuben went and had sexual relations with her. I mean, wow, di ba? Ano ba ito parang sampal sa mukha ng tatay niya? It's, it's a tremendous insult, di ba? So bakit na nagawa ito? Well, we don't exactly know. Pero many people believe that it was a, a calculated power move on his part. No? As he tries to seize the authority uh, of, of this family from his father. Kasi if there is one person that could maybe move into that favored wife role na iniwan ni Rachel, it would be Bilha, di ba? Hindi si Leia, kasi yung nanay niya, kasi and, and Ruben knows that. Jacob doesn't love Leia at all. So he's trying to manipulate this to ensure his place as the next patriarch of this family. Again, we're not sure of this. Theory lang to. But this is what we do know. 
because he did this, whatever he wanted, he lost. Kasi kung dati alanganin siya na kung sa kanya ba talaga mapupunta yung birthright as the firstborn son o hindi. Ngayon, because of this, sigurado na ang hindi. Kasi if we move forward to Genesis 49, bago mamatay si Jacob, ito ang sabi niya regarding kay Reuben. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the first fruits of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. So far, so good, di ba? Pero look at the next part. Unstable as water. You shall not have preeminence because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. And as if in-announce niya sa lahat ng tao nandun. He went up to my couch. And so, because Reuben did this, he basically fitted whatever place and inheritance he had dito sa pamilyang to. At di lang yun. His tribe throughout history never really amounted to anything. It never produced one prophet or, or one military leader or a judge or any significant person. All because of what he did here. One sin. Friends, I hope reading this, nakikita niyo yung long-term tragedy that can result from one fleeting act of selfishness or lust. Sometimes we say, okay lang yan, it's just one sin. It's manageable, guys. It can take just one instant and it will destroy everything you've worked so hard for. Yan si Ruben. He lost everything. Pero si Jacob dito, we know he's not entirely without fault. No? Bakit? Kasi Jacob never really loved Leah. Di ba? And as we have seen, by the way he treated Dinah, it seemed that he didn't love Leah's children as well. So bakit ganyan si Ruben? Excuse me. And since we're talking about it, bakit ganyan yung mga kapatid niya? Well, perhaps it's because they were the children of the unloved wife. And so by extension, they were the unloved children. Alam ko, we've been through this so many times before, pero it's, that's really the root of many of the problems sa buhay ni Jacob. Favoritism. And we will see this Jacob hard as we start to move into the story of Joseph. Guys, favoritism will destroy your family. Sometimes it may not be as obvious. Kahit sa sarili mo. Pero it might be there lurking behind the scenes. E paano ko malalaman? Well, sino tingin niyo ang pinakamagaling, pinakamagandang tanongin dyan? Who's the best evaluator of your favorite is? Sino? It's your children. You try to be humble and ask them sometimes. Tanongin mo diretso. Do you honestly think if I that I favor your brother or your sister more than you? Alam ko medyo nakakatakot tanongin yun, pero baka kung anong marinig mong sagot, di ba? Pero kasi that's really how you evaluate. Hindi lang sa sarili mo. Ay, imposible sa akin yan. Mahal ko silang lahat. Well, it, not, it might not be what your children sees. And that's going to be a big problem. So baka niloloko mo lang sarili mo, no? Kaya I pray we learn from Jacob. I pray none of our children is feeling less love. Kasi whether it's intentional or not, it will always have consequences. Let's learn, learn from, from, from this story. Okay? Verse 23 to 26 down. The sons of Jacob were 12. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. The sons of Bilha, Rachel's servant, Dan, and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpha. Leah's servant, God, and Asher, these were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in 
padan aram. So Reuben did a bad thing, and he lost his birthright because of it. But here's what's interesting: because child number two and child number three, si Simeon and Levi, the last time we saw them, ano ginawa nila? Pinatay nila yung mga tao sa Shechem, di ba? And because of this, hindi na nila, hindi na sa kanila napunta, ay, hindi din sa kanila napunta, I mean, yung birthright. So, kanina na. Well, sino ba yung susunod sa lista? Si Judah. And from his tribe will come the Messiah, Jesus himself. The Lion of Judah. In fact, sasabihin sa kanya ni Jacob that your your brothers shall praise you and bow down before you. Because child number one, two, and three all forfeited their inheritance. J Judah was lifted up. Now, question. Is he any, any better than his older brothers? Well, no. No talaga. Well, at least initially. Actually, we will have an entire chapter devoted to him in the next few weeks. Pero pag-usapan na lang natin yan pagdating natin doon. No? Pero for now, again, as we go through all these stories, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, if you don't really study your Bible, you're going to be like, wow, the great patriarchs. Wow, the great heroes of faith. But the reality is just like every character you will see in the Bible, these people are really no different from us. Diba? We all have the same issues and, and struggles. It's our sinful nature. But you see, although Jacob's family was one very dysfunctional family, God is still going to use them. And it's not because they were just, they were great spiritual men. No? In fact, yun na, yun na nga sinasabi natin. Pag tinignan mo yung buhay nila, sometimes it's the exact opposite. Di ba? But God, in His grace, chose them. And chose to do it this way. And what this is saying to us is that this function does not disqualify, but it can hinder the plans of God for you. Kasi ako, I know that despite my own dysfunctions, God still wants to use me. Alam ko yun. Pero I cannot use my dysfunction to justify my bad behavior. Kasi hindi porket sabi sa Bible that all have sinned and there is none righteous that I'll say, okay lang pala. Kasi pare-pareho lang naman tayo, tao lang tayo. Kasi tingnan mo si Jacob and his family, God still used them despite of what they did. Well, to answer that, the scripture also says, are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? By no means, how can we who died to sin still live in it? So hindi porket alam natin that grace is freely available today, we should take advantage of it. Yung iba, ganun kasi mag-isip, di ba? Na, ay God will forgive me naman. So okay lang yung gagawin ko itong magsasorry na lang ako mamaya. Alam mean, niyo, that is the complete disregard of this all-important thing called the heart of repentance. Without which, I'm sorry to tell you, you will never be a child of God. So even if it doesn't disqualify me, I don't want it to ever hinder the plans God has for me. That's why I work on it. Yeah, if there are things in your life that is genuinely that you, you genuinely need to, to work on. You need to have a, a come, come to Jesus moment. Come to Bethel moment. Like what Jacob had in the beginning of this chapter. 
and, and do it. Just do it. Ask God to forgive you and, and help you overcome and help you trust in Him. Because it's so worth it. Because I serve a holy and perfect God and I don't want my dysfunction to make me miss out on what God has for me. Okay? Let's read the last verses. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre and Kiriat Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years and Isaac breathed his last and he died. And he was gathered to his people, old and full of days, and his son Esau and Jacob buried him. Okay. I just want to point this out now, real quick. So, kung natandaan niyo, way back in chapter 27, nung naisipan ni Isaac, maipasa niya yung blessing niya sa anak niya. Natandaan niyo, ano siya namin niya kay Esau? Sabi niya, go and get me savory food and I will bless you before I die. Guys, that's 43 years ago. He lived an extra 43 years. Mas kikala niya mamamatay na siya nun dahil ang tanda na niya. And there's a lesson even in this. The Bible says, teach me to number my days, O Lord that I may gain a heart of wisdom. The reality is we don't know when we are going to die. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, I'm too old. I'm, or, I have very little time left. I'm in the twilight of my days. Or even worse, you say, I'm too young to die. Kaya mag enjoy mo na ako. The book of Job says, a man's days are numbered and the number of his months are with him. So only God knows. Ngayon, what should every single one of us do with that information? Live like every, like every single day is your last. At dito, paranoia. Huh? But live with the heart of Lord, if today is the day that I will go, then I will go. But until then, I will serve you. I will serve you with all my heart. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do it all for the glory of God. Amen? So three deaths in a single chapter. Three deaths in one family. But at the same time, a great blessing is going to come because of the revival in Jacob's heart. Now, as we end, think back to how we started. Think back to the turtle and the scorpion. Both of them died on that day in the pond. One died because he had the power to sting. Because it's his nature to sting. Could it be that you are in that place right now where you are sting? Because of your own sinful nature. It stung you and it points on you and you feel like I'm trapped by it. You say, I'm drowning myself in those around me. Hindi ko alam anong gagawin. Well, thankfully, by God's grace, unlike the scorpion or the turtle, you're still alive today. Diba? You still have that second chance to arise, as God said, and come back to Bethel. To do that 180 and return your focus back to God. Back to the heart that worships only Him. It's good for us to learn from Jacob here. Go back to what matters most. Let me share with you a very important verse that I think summarizes everything that we have talked about. 
It's from 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Sabi, for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. I'm praying that tonight's message will remind you that your life is all about God. And if your heart is completely his, you've got nothing to worry about. You can just rely on him, rest on his perfect plans and just worship him. Kahit ano pa nangyayari sa paligid mo. I want to close with a story of a song. This is also the title of our message tonight. So this song, The Heart of Worship, was composed by Matt Redman no 90s. At the time, his home church in uh, England was going through a period of apathy, no? of indifference sa worship nila. They were in a rut. Kasi the people in the congregation were, were struggling to find meaning in their Sunday worship, their Sunday services. Now the quote na nabasa ko, sabi, there was a dynamic missing. So our pastor decided to get rid of the sound system and the band. Ang point niya basically, is saying that they are losing their way in worship. Maybe it's because some people are there just to be entertained or just to, to feel good about themselves rather than to truly worship the Lord. And so they decided that maybe, maybe in order to get back to that heart of worship, that they have to strip everything down to its core to get rid of all the possible destruction. So, yung susunod na linggo, the pastor asks, when you come through the doors of the house of God, what are you bringing as your offering? Meaning you are pouring, are you, are you pouring yourselves out to the Lord? Or are you just here to consume. And this message spoke to, to this guy, Matt, so much, no? That he wrote a song as a response. Because he and the rest of the congregation now has a new perspective. And you know, worship is all about Jesus. That his very presence and grace demands a response from our souls no matter what the circumstances. That's why he would say in the song, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search so much deeper within Though the ways things appear, through the ways things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. When the music fades all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's a word That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper Oops Sorry I'm 
Into my heart, into my heart. 